Oppression and war would be heard of no more, nor blood of a slave leave his print on our shore. Conventions will then be a useless expense, for we'll all go free suffrage a hundred years hence. <laughs> I'd like to think that Theodore Roosevelt would have said it this way. The suffragists walked softly, the suffragettes carried the sticks. We must get the conditions of life made fairer. We women must organize. We must learn to work together. We have all worked so long and so exclusively for men. We hardly know how to work for one another. Paula's legacy is still very much alive today with the contributions she made to the American theatrical and political arenas. Let's take our cue for freedom in 2017 from every single suffragette, from Flora Dodge, Paula La Follette. Take a cue where our voices resonate alongside of theirs in work, in equality, and in our own kind of audio. successful in the primary campaign tomorrow and am elected to the United States Senate next November, it will not go to my head, but to my feet. I stand for honesty, justice, service, and peace in our government, and by service I mean a perfect union of work and prayer, which I have employed in my campaign. My platform is that of progressive legislation, elimination of red tape, and the relief of ex-government protection of states' rights, and in opposition to the tendency to centralize our government too much. So began Isetta Jewell, Mary Shaw, Bala La Follette, Isetta Jewell, and all of the theater women we've mentioned tonight are inspiring examples of artists using their elevated positions to fight for progressive change. Some of the names you have heard are well known to theater and suffrage historians. Others are barely mentioned. Some are left out of the narrative entirely, like Fallen. We are once again hearing our sister artists confront the entrenched power brokers at the highest levels of government and within our own industry as disturbing stories of sexual abuse are publicly coming to light. It is the power of women's voices raised both singularly and even more powerfully together that conducts the vibrant symphony of change. Just as our foremothers were ultimately successful in winning the vote after almost a century of struggle, perhaps yet another century later, we will finally hold the real benefits of the ballot. Wouldn't it be wonderful to imagine that 100 years hence our descendants are not still fighting the same battle? 